Have you ever had that experience in customer service or just in dealing with someone who works, I don't know, let's say for an example, a fast food place where the, it wasn't the skill level necessarily of the individual, but more the attitude that created the problem in the service they delivered. Have you ever experienced that or is it just me? Welcome to Leading Leaders Podcast, five minute videos, five days a week. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast. So last night we went into a, a little family restaurant kind of a place to, uh, to order some drinks and dinner. And we placed our order and we sat and we waited. And it's one of those where they call your number and you come back up and get your food. And they called my number and my food was on the counter. And so I picked up my food and then I asked the guy behind the counter after actually waiting like probably three minutes while nine employees didn't even respond to the fact that I was standing there. Um, Standing there watching my food get cold, waiting to pick up my food because it actually had replaced a drink with a shake. Now, as I'm standing there waiting, the manager walks by twice, doesn't say a word. Different people, I said, excuse me, and hey, sir, and can you help me? And one individual making shakes, did, continued making his shakes, never made eye contact with me, completely leaned against the counter, leaned against the shake machine. I'm sure he had had a long day. When he turns around to finish the shake that he was making, he brings it and sets it on the tray on the, on the tier below where I'm waiting. And I said, uh, my order came with a chocolate shake. He said, okay. Uh, I said, can you, can you tell me when, when I should expect that? And he said, well, I'm making shakes now. I said, well, I see that. In fact, I see that the next order has three shakes on it. Can, it, can I get one of those as you're making the new ones so that my food doesn't get cold? And he stops what he's doing, kind of, not kind of, extremely condescendingly puts his hands on his hips like my mother might have done and says to me, sir, we only deliver the best shakes and yours had to be remade because it wasn't good enough. And I'm like, oh, I never got a shake, so I don't know who would have said it wasn't good enough, but since then you've made three others, so... Any chance we could fast forward one of those to my order and make one more to replace it for that because their food's not even ready yet because I'm looking at the tray and, and the food's not there yet. And he huffs off. Finally, the manager comes over and says, what's the problem? And the kid comes back and says, he's complaining he doesn't have his shake yet. He said, well, there's three shakes right here. Why can't he have one of those? He said, I'm remaking his shake. And the manager looks at both of us like, did I miss something? And I'm thinking to myself, did I miss something? Finally, the manager just takes one of the three shakes and puts it on my tray and says, are we good? I said, yeah, we're good. Except his attitude is really bad. He said, yeah, I'm sorry. That's it. I'm like, okay then. So I take my food and I go to my table and I get to my table to find that what I don't have is a chocolate shake. What I do have is warm chocolate milk in a cup. Now, I don't know how long it takes to make three shakes, but if in the process of making three shakes, the first of those three shakes has already melted to warm chocolate milk, there's something wrong with your process. Now, this is not just a rant about the service that I received at this particular restaurant. There are some lessons in this from a leadership standpoint. Okay, number one, the young man who is so very condescending, very, you'll get what you get, when I give it to you, kind of an attitude. And that may not have been his exact words, but that was absolutely his attitude. May have come from a little entitlement, might have come from having a long day. I'm not trying to cast aspersions necessarily on his personhood and his character, but I can tell you his way in dealing with the open public is a very condescending way. I say that because as I took my food and walked away to the table, this young man turned back to the shake machine and I turned to the manager and said, can I get a complaint card? And he said, a what? I said, a complaint card, you know, like the kind of thing that you would fill out and send to the corporate office to complain about a service that you've experienced. And he said, uh, we don't have those. I said, good, can I have the boss, the manager, or the owner's number? He said, we don't have that. I said, well, there's a number on your receipt. I'll call back tomorrow and talk to the day manager. And he says, I'll get you the number. And he walks away. And the young man shouts down the line to all the employees and for all the customers to hear. Do you see that? You see how a complaint isn't really a complaint because there's no complaint here. And I thought, you know, it's, it's not bad enough that you make a mistake, that you 
berate the customer for the mistake you've made, that you get an attitude and condescend to the customer, but now you wanna make it public to everybody else in the place that you're above reproach, that you can't be busted for what you've done, and that nobody really cares anyway, so now everyone else who decides to treat a customer the same way can celebrate with you. Okay, what we don't have here is an error in a process. While that was there, and I'll, I'll point to it in a moment, what we have here is an attitude that I'm too good for this job, and who do you think you are as a customer to interrupt my fiefdom while I'm here making chocolate shakes? Now, I can tell you, as I watched him make the next shake, it took, no exaggeration, 30 seconds to get the lid from the lid holder securely fastened on the top of the Maybe that's why they were warm chocolate milk before they were served to the customer. But the fact that the manager didn't have the spine to stand up to this young man and say, please don't talk to my customers that way. We're trying to run a business here. And if all of our customers are treated that way, they're simply going to leave. I can tell you in the time that we were there, there were probably seven or eight people in line before us while we were waiting to order. And nobody had the moxie or the wherewithal to say, if you're ordering ice cream, the line is here. If you're ordering food, the line is here. No one said that. So there were just a bunch of people huddled around in the front of the restaurant and they had no idea where they were supposed to go. And I waited at least five minutes. Not exaggerating. I'm not being unfair. I'm being very realistic. At least five minutes. After I asked the couple in front of me, you're ordering food or ice cream, they said ice cream. I said, I believe the ice cream line is there. I stepped past them to the register to order my food. At least five minutes. There were nine employees behind the counter. Nine. Nine. Nine to handle a drive through taking orders at the register, making food, and serving ice cream. Nine. And it took five minutes for somebody to say, hey, how can I help you? And it's because the manager of the store was making shakes, the manager of the store was pouring drinks, the manager of the store was taking orders at the register, the manager of the store was getting fries out of the grease, the manager of the store was putting food in the to-go bag, and running it out the door past eight other employees who couldn't seem to keep up with that. All right, so what we have here is a leadership lesson in leadership failure. Whether it's the inability to tell somebody you're doing that wrong, please stop or find another job, or it's the inability to simply delegate the authority of being the manager to say, I need you to do this, I need you to do this, stay focused on this, please pick up your pace. I also walked to, watched a young man walk through the store. Uh, I believe he was picking up the trash at the time that we watched him. Uh, I could have run to the front of the store or just moved at a normal sense of urgency pace from the front of the store to the back of the store at least 15 times, tortoise in the hairstyle, in the time that it took him to get from behind the counter with the trash bag to the back office or storeroom or whatever that was to empty the trash bag and then back with the replacement trash bag. I, I ate more than half my hamburger in the time it took him to do that. I don't know if he was taking a break in the midst of it. No, he couldn't have been taking a break because when he finished that, he sat down at a table with food to eat. But he did manage to take almost six minutes to empty a trash can. Again, yes, there's some attitude problem in the staff, but the biggest problem is the failure of leadership. So last indicator of the failure of leadership, besides not having a spine or the ability to stand up to an entitled, young, pompous, condescending teenager who has a smart mouth and poor work habits. I watched this teenager make five shakes in the time that I was waiting for mine. Um, all of them, by the way, were for guests that we were having dinner with and all of them were served watery on the top, warm chocolate milk in the middle and a little bit of ice cream in the bottom. All of them. All five shakes that landed on our table, that was their condition. But part of the reason was that the young man was using a steel sleeve in the top of the chocolate shake and a styrofoam cup at the bottom. Now, if you've ever made a shake and the machine with a little spinny thing that stick on the end of a stick and they spin really fast, that thing's designed to basically mulch a clump of solid ice cream. If you don't do that in a steel container, it's coming through the side of the cup and you're going to shoot chocolate ice cream all over the place. But when you get the steel sleeve in the top and the ice cream at the bottom, when you put it on there and do this thing and don't go to the bottom because you're afraid you're going to rip the bottom out of the cup again, 
Um, that's how you end up serving it. Watery on the top, warm milk in the bottom, and frozen, or warm milk in the middle and frozen ice cream at the bottom. And that's what was served for the course of the night. Part of that's an attitude problem, but more than anything else, that's a training problem. That's the manager's problem. That's a leadership problem. Across the board though, the entire experience was exacerbated by the attitudes, by the poor customer service, by the amount of time that it took nine people to deliver what normally in a place like that three people could have done. Fascinating to me, just the sense of organization. Now a friend of ours, a guy by the name of Michael Quinney, runs a Spring Creek restaurant. My boys, when they were teenagers, one of their first jobs was to work there, besides working for me, was to work in that Spring Creek restaurant. My son who was with me said, we should get Q to come up here and show him how to run this restaurant. And I said, you know what? I don't think this restaurant would last 15 minutes with Q or Q would last 15 minutes because the minute those teenagers turned with that attitude to him, they'd be looking for another job. I really believe what we're seeing in fast foods, in retail, in all kinds of other establishment is a wave of a collision. On the one side, we have a lot of entitled people who feel like I really shouldn't even have to have a job. This is really just kind of ticking me off that I have to come to work, but my parents stopped paying my car payment. I have to have money from somewhere. And until I get free student loans and a free college degree so I can get a better job, then this is all I have. This is all I have. I, I'm going to have to do this. And on the other side of that same collision is the reality that we have leaders, many of whom grew up with the same mentality, who have no work ethic and they don't have the spine to stand up to a 15 year old, 16 year old, 17 year old who will scream in your face because they wanted a 17 minute break because they weren't done with TikTok yet and not a 15 minute break as the schedule expects. I, I heard an employee complain while I'm standing at the register taking my order. The employee comes up and says, I, I guess I'm not gonna take a lunch break until after all these customers are gone. And I'm thinking to myself, that's, that's a good observation. That, that's pretty good that you would be able to catch on to that, that you're probably not gonna get sent to lunch if you can't keep up with what you got right now. And I'm sorry that you may have to delay that for a couple of minutes, but in case you hadn't noticed yet, the fact that you have customers is why you have a job, it's how you can afford to take a lunch break. That mentality is missing. The leadership moxie to stand up and say, Great observation, thank you, but let's not discuss this in front of the customers. Let's get back to work. We'll have this conversation later if I need to extend your lunch hour or something. We can talk about that. See, that, that doesn't exist in the leader. The leader kowtows in so many occasions to the will of the employee, not the need of the customer, not the loyalty to the owner of the business, but to the employee and their attitude. Now, if you, serve in any of those areas. If you're an employee and you have that kind of attitude that I'm only here because I have a car payment to make and you have no other diligence or loyalty to the job, please reconsider how you get to have a job in the first place. How do you have the right to earn income? Uh, because you have customers. And if you piss off all those customers or you serve them poorly, they have thousands of other options. And in case you're curious, when business starts to decline because customer service has started to decline, your hours will diminish. And when your hours diminish, you don't get more money to make up the difference. You get another job, sometimes three and four. The best job security in the world is good customer service. And good customer service starts with good training paired with a good attitude. That's your leadership lesson for today. And if you're a young somebody working in any customer facing job and you haven't learned that your job is not about you, it's about your customer and the ability to serve them the way that they want, you probably should ask for some additional training. I'm just saying. And if you're a manager and you're responsible for leading nine people to do the job of three and you haven't figured out how to delegate to do that beyond you doing four of the five jobs, you probably should look for another line of work or again, ask for some help. By the way, I provide leadership training and attitude training. I would be delighted to come spend the day with you. No, I'm not doing it for free, but absolutely I will work on the attitude with the people in your team. 
And if your business fits the description I just described of the one that I encountered last night, please call me. My number's on Facebook. My number's on Google. Just search my name, J. Lauren Norris, on Google. I promise you'll be able to find the website with a contact number, with an email. And in, in fact, there is a free training offer right there on the website. It says free leadership training. Just click on it and schedule it. I will come. We'll spend an hour together. I promise. I promise. And I will deliver the kind of customer service that I would expect to receive. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast. We're Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day. Subscribe now for our extensive video library of leadership lessons promoting faith, family, and freedom.